Let me start with my headline tonight. I'm retiring. This is TMZ's DNC propagandist, Oops, I mean host, Chris Matthews. Oops, I mean former host, Chris Matthews, because you're fired. And even that is further predicated on the word host, including in its definition something to the effect of yet another liberal mainstream media hypocrite who spent 20 years preaching the gospel of female empowerment while filling the in-between spaces by more or less cracking open the Bill Clinton latex linings playbook of sexual harassment, turning to the nearest thing with adipose fat and saying, Hey girl. This is the last hardball on MSNBC, and obviously, this isn't for lack of interest in politics. As you can tell, I've loved every minute of my 20 years as host of Hardball. As it happens, Chris uh, Matthews was loving every minute of his hardball somewhat above and beyond what we here in America refer to as legal. In an op-ed in GQ published just three days before this humiliation, written by freelance journalist Laura Bassett, quote, MSNBC host Chris Matthews, whose long history of sexist comments and behavior have somehow not yet gotten him fired, tested the boundaries of his own misogyny again on Wednesday night. After the 10th Democrat presidential debate, the hardball anchor grilled Elizabeth Warren about one of her lines of attack against Mike Bloomberg during the debate, that a pregnant female employee accused Bloomberg of telling her to kill it. You believe he's lying? Matthews asked Warren of Bloomberg's denial. I believe the woman, which means he's not telling the truth, said Warren, who recently had to defend her own credible story of pregnancy discrimination. And why would he lie, Matthew said, just to protect himself? Yeah, and why would she lie, Warren responded pointedly. I just want to make sure you're clear about this, Matthew said. Right there on America's purportedly liberal network, the anchor spoke to a 70-year-old United States senator who is running for president and a renowned Harvard Law professor of color, no less, like she couldn't possibly understand her own words as if she were a child choosing between a snack now or dessert later. Do you believe that the former mayor of New York said that to a pregnant employee? Well, a pregnant employee sure said that he did. Why shouldn't I believe her? You know, I'm just really tired of this world. This one is personal for me. It really is. But you pregnancy believe that back, you believe he's that kind of person real. who did that. Look, pregnancy discrimination yeah. is real. And these we have gone on and on and on where people say, oh, I can't really believe the woman. Really? Why not? Is sure this campaign, it is that word socialism. Some people like it, younger people like it. Those of us like me who grew up in the, grew up in the Cold War and saw some aspects of it after visiting places like Vietnam, like I have, and seeing countries like Cuba being there, I've seen what socialism is like. I don't like it, okay? It's not only not free, it doesn't freaking work. Quick time out to explain for anyone who still doesn't understand what's going on here. One, Chris Matthews definitely did not retire, he was fired, and the reason he was fired is a pretty simple and straightforward. <laughs> Of course, just because Chris Matthews is getting railroaded for defying the matriarchy doesn't mean he's innocent. He is, after all, a liberal, and if there's one thing liberals hate more than women, it's black people. Bernie Sanders could come out, out of that state potentially with every single delegate, and that's where the challenge is for the rest of these Democrats. Tammy, I see you standing next to the guy you're going to beat right there, maybe, maybe, maybe. Lindsey Graham. Tim Scott, Tim Scott. Jamie? Tim Scott. Who's that? That's Tim Scott. I'm sorry. Oh, it's the other senator, Scott. What am I saying? Big mistake. Mistaken identity, sir. Sorry. Tell me how you're going to beat uh, Lindsey. Also, it appears Matthews is likewise at least somewhat guilty of a certain sort of Bill Clinton-esque inability to process the female figure without ejaculating the content of hardball all over their horrified faces. Continued Bassett, quote, Some of Matthews' behavior has already been well documented. Like Bloomberg, who frequently remarked, Nice and I do her at the office, Matthews has a pattern of making comments about women's appearances in demeaning ways. The number of on-air incidents is long, exhausting, and creepy, including commenting to Erin Burnett, for example, you're a knockout, it's all right getting bad news from you, while telling her to move closer to the camera. Could you get a little closer to the camera? My, what is it? Is it Come in closer. Strangely? No, coming, coming further, coming closer. Really close. 
What, what do you what do you do? <laughs> I'm just kidding. You look great. Anyway, it's thanks. Aaron, it's great to have look at that look. Yeah, I'm no, you're beautiful. Location. Thank you. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You're a knockout. Next time the producer has to choose between a picture of more of Margaret Brennan and that oil derrick, that offshore oil derrick, stay <laughs> on Margaret Brennan, okay? She's a beautiful woman. She's a very bright reporter. She makes us feel good. Bring back Margaret. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Back by five hundred demand. Yeah. Happy Friday. And she's six feet tall besides. It's good. You're gorgeous. High heels are a big part of this for some reason. <laughs> I, I, maybe it's the, your photography, but you, women look great, of course, but you're always shooting the legs, shooting the, the, the shoes. Yeah. Janelle, you're in a wind tunnel. You look great, by the way, in the wind tunnel. Your legs get caught in this. Machine. Everybody's looking at your legs, looking at the shoes. We're, we're introducing these gorgeous uh, creatures of God here. You're walking down the street. Be careful, okay, okay with your advances you're all making with your eyes right now. <laughs> Taryn, you first. You're giving me the peepers, I can tell. What are you doing here? You're flashing your incredible eyebrows at me. Oh, boy. Oh, nice you look try, great. Chris. You are, no, you're in great shape. We have I've got to go to Din Din sometime. You look great, by the way, if I'm allowed to say that. Unbelievable. I'm not allowed to say this, but I'll say it. You're beautiful. I get in trouble for this, but you're great looking, obviously. You're one of the God's gifts to men in this country. Very attractive people, physically. I mean, they're beautiful people. Like, <laughs> like Nikki Haley's gorgeous. I think the party won't have works. a role in it. Do you see her walk? We, um, runway walk. we just uh, oh heard God, from the likely great? nominee. And Coulter, you find her physically attractive, Tucker. Mike, you want to weigh in here as an older fellow. Do you <laughs> find her to be a physically you know attractive what? woman? I find her, I wouldn't put her on, well, she doesn't cost <laughs> Chris Matthews test. I'm on the 29th floor overlooking this incredible city. I'm here to judge the Miss America pageant, which I've always wanted to do. I've never seen such talent and great looking women. Quote, this tendency to objectify women in his orbit has bled into his treatment of female politicians and candidates. He has repeatedly lusted over women in politics on air, including remarking in 2011 that there's something electric and very attractive about the way former vice presidential candidate Sarah Palin walks and moves, and noting in 2017 that acting attorney general Sally Yates is attractive, obviously. And yet, while Matthews does seem to have difficulty controlling himself around women, there is at least one that even Laura Bassett is forced to acknowledge that does not and never has gotten the softball treatment from the hardball host. Quote, he has reserved a particular contempt for the woman who made it closest to ascending the heights of American political power, Hillary Clinton, calling her witchy, anti-male, and she-devil. <laughs> Hold on. The Cut obtained footage of him joking in early 2016 just before a live interview with then-candidate Clinton, where's that Cosby pill, referring to the date rape drug. In 2005, he openly wondered whether the troops would take the orders from a female president. After another interview, he pinched Clinton's cheek, and in another, he suggested that she had only so much political success because her husband had messed around. Let's not forget, and I'll be brutal, the reason she's a U.S. Senator, the reason she's a candidate for president, the reason she may be a front-runner is her husband messed around. Yeah, but That's how she got to be Senator from New York. We keep forgetting it. She didn't win there on her merits. She won because everybody felt, my God, this woman um, stood up under humiliation. Right? That's what happened. That's how it happened. In 1998, she went to New York and campaigned for Chuck Schumer as almost like the grieving widow of absurdity. And she did it so well okay. and courageously. But it was about the humiliation of Bill Clinton. That Bill Clinton believes that this campaign of Hillary Clinton's is for cocktail. It's terrible. It's badly run. Badly, it hasn't even been thought through. There is no focus to it. When you ask her why you're running, you don't get a clear answer. And there's no joy. There's no Clinton fun. It's totally missing a soul. Again, do you like the way things are, the way they've been headed in this country? Do you like the continual destruction of our manufacturing base and the jobs that went with it? Do you like the uncontrolled illegal immigration? Do you like this string of stupid wars from Iraq to Libya to Syria? If you want to say yes to all that, you want to keep all this the way it is, go for Hillary Clinton. Your personal admirer and friend, Chris Matthews, was in the front row. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes, and I, you know, I had guards, Good. armed guards don't, between him and me. Don't dance with him. No. Don't oh, do I, it. Well, I feel like he manhandles me every night, yeah. so. I want to try to help you uh, for this audience tonight, our audience, <laughs> locate yourself politically in this country. Now, we have Trump out there and we have Bernie out here. Now, Bernie calls himself a socialist. Nobody uses a derogatory term anymore. It's his, he loves to have that label. He's never ran as a Democrat. He runs against Democrats up there in Vermont. You're a Democrat. I'd say you're a pretty typical Democrat uh, in the tradition of the Democratic Party. And uh, Humphrey, the rest of them, and Scoop, and not even Scoop, I'd say Mondale, you're somewhere in there. Uh, what's the difference between a socialist and a Democrat? 
Well, is that have, a question you want to answer, or would you rather not? Play, well, play? Uh, you know, I, you'd have to ask. Well, see, I'm asking have, you. You're well, a Democrat. He's a socialist. Do you, would you like somebody to call you a socialist? I wouldn't like somebody calling well, me a socialist. But I'm, I'm not one. Okay. I well, mean, what's I'm, the difference I'm between a socialist one. and a Democrat? Last well, question. I can tell you what I am. I am a. Yes, DNCS NBC former host Chris Matthews is an old, heterosexual, female objectifying white male. And deserved or not, you can't really check all those boxes and hope to keep a job at a propaganda outlet whose main draw is a slightly more masculine version of Justin Bieber, only with a smaller vagina. But what you definitely can't do is both humiliate the ever-living out of the pantsuit beef demon and continue to suckle the stolen nectar that is the fruits of liberalism. Which is probably why Chris Matthews looks like he's going to do exactly what he's going to do. End Chris Matthews' career. Here at Career Resume Consulting, we're a full-service executive career firm, and one of the programs that we offer is a complete overhaul of your personal brand. And this includes things like your resumes and your LinkedIn profile. And one of our specialties is highlighting the very best accomplishments of our clients in the resumes that we write. But when we worked with John John, his resume needed more than polish. John John, I did have a quick question about your resume. Is that a c No. That's my c That looks like it was a lot of work. Well, it was, but his new resumes got him his perfect job now, and now he's being paid what he's worth. Now I know what you're thinking, it seems like there's quite a bit of daylight to be monster hunting, but what you have to understand is these are very scent based animals, so it doesn't matter so much how much light there is as whether you stay up or downwind, and we've done this correctly, so if you uh, kind of look over my shoulder there real quick, you can, uh, you can see it, and uh, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go over there, and I'm going to fight it. <laughs> Thanks Tammy! From a New York Post article by Kyle Smith, quote, Chris Matthews didn't get fired for being a sex monster, he got fired for doing his job. And what was that job? To represent the non-crazy, no Kool-Aid for me thanks left on television while being entertaining and pointed and wacky. Read the GQ piece published Friday that apparently got Matthews fired and you'll note that the writer, Laura Bassett, had two completely unrelated categories of complaint that she artfully weaved together to create an indictment of Matthews as a sexist. One complaint was that Matthews would compliment women's looks. He said of Sarah Palin that there was something electric and very attractive about her. He told Aaron Burnett, you're a knockout. All true. He made a couple of mild compliments to Bassett, why haven't I fallen in love with you yet? True, men shouldn't talk this way around the office, and few guys under 50 have failed to get the message that this kind of thing makes some women uncomfortable. But Matthews is 70. Old guys still flirt with young women as a way of telling themselves they're still in the game. Young women used to be more forgiving to recognize the pathos underlying the impulse and shrug it off. Now they exaggerate their emotional reaction, pretend that they're shaken or couldn't breathe. Bassett writes that a couple of flirty comments from Matthews undermined my ability to do my job well. That is hard to believe. Why do these women pretend to be undone by a stray compliment? There's always some ulterior motive. Bassett is utterly blatant about her real motive. She wanted Matthews fired for the way he interviewed Hillary Clinton and Elizabeth Warren. She thinks Matthews damaged her political favorites, thinking, probably correctly, that when a prominent Democrat criticizes such candidates, he signals other moderate Democrats and centrists that it's okay to vote for someone else. So Matthews laid it on a bit thick at times, comparing Bernie Sanders to the Nazis overrunning France? Ridiculous. Never compare anyone who hasn't murdered at least a million people to Hitler. Still, hysterical analogies are exactly what drives viewership of Hardball and all the TV and radio shows like it. We tune in to these guys hoping they'll say something completely bonkers. 
Yet, to assuage the Bernie Bros, MSNBC, which a couple of weeks ago was forced by market pressures to announce it would be hiring more Bernie-friendly voices, made Matthews issue a groveling apology for the Nazi joke. This on a network where the comparisons of President Trump to Hitler are so unremarkable that it happened seven times in July alone. Trump hadn't even taken office before Rachel Maddow told Rolling Stone, quote, Over the past year, I've been reading a lot about what it was like when Hitler first became Chancellor because I think that's possibly where we are. Conclusion, saying crazy stuff doesn't get you fired from MSNBC. It's only saying stuff that annoys the left that gets you fired from MSNBC. But that was what was important about Matthews. He's an impeccably credentialed Democrat who doesn't always stick to the party lines. It's possible Matthews did worse things than what we know about so far, but as of today, it looks like he's been unfairly thrown into the same cultural ditch with actual predators like Harvey Weinstein. He has been forever smeared as a sex abuser when what really cost him his job was being rude to Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton, and Elizabeth Warren. This is perhaps why that while he does allude to certain comments he made to women in his final farewell, Chris Matthews also didn't tell a single f***ing person at MSNBC about his plan to quit, left nearly the entire hour of programming unfilled, and even worked in a quite clever Casablanca reference. And while I personally am no Chris Matthews fan, the New York Post article and some of the clips you've seen earlier just might give you a different perspective on this last goodbye. Let me start with my headline tonight. I'm retiring. This is the last hardball on MSNBC. And obviously, this isn't for lack of interest in politics. As you can tell, I've loved every minute of my 20 years as host of Hardball. Every morning I read the papers and I'm gung-ho to get to work. Not many people have had this privilege. I love working with my producers and the discussions we have over how to report the news. And I love having this connection with you, the good people who watch. I've learned who you are, bumping into you on the sidewalk or at waiting at an airport and saying hello. You're like me. I hear it from your kids and grandchildren who say my dad loves you or my grandmother loves you or my husband watched it till the end. Well, after a conversation with MSNBC, I decided tonight will be my last hardball. So let me tell you why. The younger generations out there are ready to take the reins. We see them in politics, in the media, in fighting for their causes. They are improving the workplace. We're talking here about better standards than we grew up with, fair standards. A lot of it has to do with how we talk to each other. Compliments on a woman's appearance that some men, including me, might have once incorrectly thought were okay. We're never okay. Not then and certainly not today. And for making such comments in the past, I'm sorry. I'm very proud of the work I've done here. Long before I went on television, I worked for years in politics, was a newspaper columnist, an author. I'm working on another book. I'll continue to write and talk about politics and cheer on my producers and crew here in Washington and New York and my MSNBC colleagues. They will continue to produce great journalism in the years ahead. And for those of you who have gotten in the habit of watching Hardball every night, I hope you're going to miss because I'm going to miss you. But remembering Humphrey Bogart and Casablanca will always have Hardball. So let's not say goodbye, but till we meet again. Um, that was a lot to take in just now, I'm sure. And I'm sure you're still um, absorbing that, and, and I am too. Um, Chris Matthews is a giant. He's a legend. Um, it's been an honor for me to work with him, uh, to sit in here on occasion. Uh, and I know how much you meant to him, and I know my, how much he meant to you. And I think you're going to miss him, and I know I'm going to. Um, we're not going to have any bells or whistles here. We do have to fill the rest of this hour. We're going to take a quick break and come back with today's news. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this content, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to see more of it, consider supporting this channel through monthly or one-time donations or by purchasing a shirt, mug, or original music, all of which can be done at johnwardcinematics.com. If you're considering a career move at any level, I highly recommend taking advantage of Career Resume Consulting's Sample Resume Pack today. Blow the dust off your current resume and follow a new format that has proven to get three to four times the response rate of a liberal. Use this free sample resume pack that CEO Tammy Cabell has put together exclusively for world champions by clicking the link in the description. As always, thank you for watching. I'm John Ward, and until next time, remember, you're a world champion.
Don't let your memes be dreams. Oh! Holy fucking shit! Yeah, this fucking timeline is lit all over this over world's biggest Alex Joner. Oh! Holy fucking cow! This fucking timeline is wow. all over this over world's biggest Alex Joner. All of my sexual fantasies involve handcuffs.